All right, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're tuning in throughout anywhere in the world, because we know that we go global, and today we're going to actually travel global. I want to welcome you again to another one of our District Innovation Team live events. I'm Mr. Garcia with the Innovation Station, and I am so happy that you have joined us wherever you are at. I want to thank our amazing station partners who continue to support us in our virtual environment, the Qualcomm Thinkabit Lab, the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the City of Chula Vista, and of course, our friends at the Chula Vista Public Libraries. Behind the scenes, I have my co-pilots, Mr. Bruder, Mrs. Hughes, and Mrs. Bystrek, who will be moderating the chat, and they cannot wait to take your questions. Also, we're going to have another Kahoot game for you, so pay close attention to what you'll be hearing today. All right, let's get ready to enter the danger zone. Cool. Our focus today will be building an airplane. So today we'll take on the role of an aerospace engineer as we learn about the history of flight and then design, create, and test our very air own airplane. Before we get started, I would like to ask a question and I would like for you to drop your answers in the chat. Here's the question. What are your favorite types of airplanes? So. Mine happens to be the jets that the Blue Angels fly around San Diego. I love seeing the tricks and the collaboration that you do while they're flying. So again, please be sure, be, please be sure to share your answers in the chat. Okay, so if you're wondering, why are we learning about airplanes? Well, that's a great question. Did you know that within San Diego County, we have a rich history with airplanes? And this happens to come with the military presence we have within our county, the annual air show that takes place in Miramar, and not to mention the San Diego International Airport known as Lindbergh Field. However, I'm sure some of you have even had the chance to visit San the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Did you know that they're an affiliate of the Smithsonian Institution? And that that museum houses a collection of historical aircrafts and spacecrafts from all over the world including a flight worthy replica of Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis. Now, speaking of Charles Lindbergh, did you know that he was an all-American aviator and a military officer? He was an author, an inventor, and an activist, and all at the age of 25 in 1927, he went from the humble beginnings of a U.S. Air Mail pilot to instantaneous world fame by winning the Ortec Prize for making a nonstop flight from New York City to Paris. By August of 1928, the dedication of our very own Lindbergh Field was inspired by Charles Lindbergh's historic 1927 transatlantic flight. And, he, and from there, his plane built here in San Diego. That's kind of cool to know that his specific plane was built in our very own city. So because of that, the city funded the construction of a two-way um, runway municipal, uh, municipal airport. As we can see, our region and city of San Diego has a rich history of aviation and the development of airplanes. All right, let's keep moving forward. So as we get ready to dive into the science and the building of airplanes, I think we should take a few steps back and understand the important history a flight. So I would like to introduce to you all the Wright brothers to dive more into who they are and what they did for the development of human flight. So let's check out this next video. Boys, I've brought you a new toy. Twist the rubber bands like so and watch what happens. It flies. How does it do that? Let's take it apart and find out. Wilbur and Orville Wright, the legendary inventors of the world's first airplane. How did they become the inventors who changed transportation and the world forever? To find out, let's travel back in time. The late 1800s and early 1900s were an exciting time when inventors were transforming the way people lived and traveled around the world. A journey that once took weeks on horseback took hours by train. 
A trip across the Atlantic Ocean that had taken months on a sailing vessel took just one week by steamship. But the Wright brothers, who by this time were building and selling bicycles in their own shop, wanted more. They yearned to fly. Highly trained scientists and engineers around the globe were racing to build the world's first airplane. But so far, their efforts had failed dismally. Orville, we know how to build things. We're good at learning and we work hard. Why not try? So the Wright brothers set out to learn everything they could about flying machines. They even wrote to experts at America's most famous museum, the Smithsonian Institution. My observations have convinced me that human flight is possible. I have some pet theories on the proper construction of a flying machine. In their quest to build an engine-powered airplane, the brothers' first step was to build a flying machine with no engine at all a glider. The Wright brothers used their experience building and repairing bicycles to test different frames and over 200 designs for their glider's wings. But for a long time, nothing worked. The brothers could not maintain control of their test gliders as they soared through the air. Until one day... Orville, look how the tips of that bird's feathers curve. It keeps the bird steady. That's how birds stay balanced as they fly. We did it! The wing warping worked! The brothers were ecstatic. Their years of work had paid off. Now it was time to build an engine for their plane. And finally, on the windy morning of December 17, 1903, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, the Wright Brothers' airplane soared into history. The brothers' amazing invention ushered in a new era in transportation, making the world a much smaller place. And just 66 years after that windy morning at Kitty Hawk, humans journeyed to the moon on another historical flight and took a piece of the Wright Brothers' famous plane with them. Who knows where the Wright Brothers' invention might take us next? That was pretty inspiring. And just to think that that happened approximately 100 years ago, crazy to think that the planes have been around that long. So before we dive into our question about who builds airplanes, I think this would be a great time to check in with those answers from our previous question. What are your favorite types of airplanes? So, hey, Mr. Bruder, one of my other co-pilots out there, do we have any answers from our friends watching us today? Yes, we do. We have uh, Jesse, Carl, and Anthony all share that they really like jets. Nice. Different types of jets. Kyle also shared that he likes uh, stealth planes. Cool. Those are really cool. And Hannah from Parkview shared an old plane that she saw on a ship, which reminded me about one of my favorites, <laughs> Mr. Garcia. And those are all the ones that you get to see in the USS Midway here in San Diego. Nice. That's right. That's a great um, connection there to see all those planes that we do have on our USS Midway here in San Diego. Yeah, That's there's 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 actually over 30 different aircrafts on there. Aircrafts, helicopters, jets, propeller aircraft. So it's a pretty cool place. That is so cool. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing those answers, Mr. B. And um, well, speaking of more questions, I have another one. What do we call people who study and build airplanes well there's a name for that and that is an aerospace engineer so what do they do what they do is they perform engineering duties in designing constructing and testing aircrafts missiles and spacecrafts they also recommend improvements in testing and equipment techniques i also want to share with our fourth fifth and sixth graders the riasa code that we noticed and that's connected here with this career all in all, the RISEC is an interest profile that aligns strengths of individuals with careers. There's a total of six different themes. However, as we can see, we have the RISEC themes of realistic and investigative, specifically for an aerospace engineer. This means that aerospace engineers love problem solving, getting involved with manual labor, as well as asking questions and being curious about their discoveries. 
Did you know that there are a lot of aerospace engineering companies here in San Diego? But one I would like to call out, and that's our local one here in Chula Vista. That's right, here within our very own zip code known as Collins Aerospace. It's pretty cool because they're actually neighbors to our friends at the Living Coast Discovery Center. All right, let's continue moving forward. So let's dive a little more into what, aeros what an aerospace engineer does. So as we watch this video, I want actually your help for this. I want you to answer another question for me in the chat box. What other types of careers involve flight? All right, so as we watch this video, not only just watch it, but answer this question. What other types of careers involve flight? I know one of our moderators is gonna put it in the chat. So just in case you forget, just read in the chat box. Also, make sure you're paying attention. You never know if some of these vocabulary words may appear on the Kahoot. All right, let's check this video out. What is aerospace engineering? With 8,100 satellites and nearly 25,000 aircraft flying around the world, you know the role of an aerospace engineer is something quite special. So at the core, an aerospace engineer would design something to fly. We're talking aircraft, spacecraft, satellites, missiles. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Now, how it intends on flying is where it gets interesting. I mean, is the craft going to use jet engines or propellers? What's about the fuel? Are we going for the classic kerosene or thinking solar panels and batteries? What's about the passengers? How many? Is it over 500? Or are we just flying for one that's specialised in air-to-air -air combat? And the range of the craft? Are we travelling over 100 million miles? Or is it just over the ridge to get those breathtaking drone shots? These are the questions that engineers need to answer before any component is designed. Let's take... All right, so that was just a quick snippet of what an aerospace engineer does, but let's dive into some of the vocabulary words that we just actually understood right now, okay? So number one, aerospace engineer. All in all, what they do is they design something that can fly. So that's what an aerospace engineer does. They design something that can fly. Range for an air within aerospace engineering is defined as the distance an airplane can travel within a given amount of fuel. So when we're communicating about range within aerospace engineering, we're talking about a distance from point A to point B and how much fuel it's gonna take. Next is an important word, maintenance. It's a task that ensures the safety and security of an aircraft. Now, one thing I will say this, I love driving by airport hangars, which are pretty much kind of like garages for airplanes. I love looking at the airplanes being fixed up because when I see that kind of stuff, I immediately think that there's clearly some innovation, problem solving and improving taking place. So before we move on to the next part, when we're going to start designing our specific flight, I'd like to check in again with Mr. Bruder and see if he has any answers from the questions that I asked earlier. And that is this. What other types of careers involve flight? So Mr. B, do we have any of our friends answer any of those questions? Uh, answer that specific question we sure did we had uh kyle share the people that do the maintenance on helicopters and planes was one nice career. we also had jared and roxanne share about pilots cool uh, right. natalia, natalia mentioned astronauts yep that's another one those ones are really cool engineers because not only do they fly in our in, in a uh, our atmosphere, but they actually fly outside of our atmosphere too. Right, and then uh, we had another viewer who said uh, air traffic controller. That's a great one. That is awesome. And we also had a couple of our friends who mentioned um, skydivers. Skydivers. That is cool too. That is another career. That is awesome. And there's many more careers out there that exist. Um, even a flight attendant. I'm pretty sure a lot of us enjoy those uh, in-flight snacks and whatnot. So awesome. Thank you so much again, Mr. Bruder, for sharing these responses. Those were awesome responses. So now let's lead us to this next part. Wondering how these aerospace engineers and even the Wright brothers got started with creating a technology that would fly. Well, you know what? I think here's a start. It's the engineering design process. That's right, the faithful and stable EDP. The engineering design process is a design thinking habit of mind that allows us to solve problems and create solutions. So have you ever been faced with a challenge or a problem? 
If so, maybe using this guide could help you solve it. So speaking of challenges, let's dive into our engineering design process by looking at the problem slash want and needs and the solution, which is also the engineering challenge. So first off, on our engineering de design process, let's see what we're going to identify as the want and the need. There you go. We want to build an airplane, plain and simple. Next, for the solution or the engineering challenge, design and build a device that can fly in the air. So at this point, I know what my needs are and I also know what my solution is, okay? But you know what? Before we move forward, I do have some questions. So let's dive in into what kind of questions we might have as we get ready to start building. So this is the part of the engineering design process where asking good questions come into play. And here are some of the questions that I may have. Um, what materials are we going to use? I'm pretty sure some of you have even asked that in the chat. Hey, what materials do I need today? Well, we'll find out in a few moments. Another question could be how much time will it take to build? Now, I'm on a time constraint because I have to have this built and done before we're even done, but you're not. So maybe it might take you 30 minutes, an hour. It might take you a full day. It might take you weeks. I mean, it took the Wright brothers several months to finally perfect flight. The other question could be what plane structure will fly a longer distance? That's actually pretty cool. And some of you already mentioned it. We mentioned different types of planes like this different jets that exist or helicopters. Uh, let's not forget the passenger planes like the 747s. The other question and the last one I'm thinking of is how will the structure of the wings catch the best wind available? I got that question just by simply watching what the Wright brothers did in their observations, looking at how the curved wings of birds impact their flight. So now that we've gotten some questions, let's step into the next phase, which is actually one of my favorite ones. And that is this, the imagine stage. So in order to activate this, I have to start thinking of what ideas I have from my prior knowledge that would inspire me to build something. And you know what? I will say this as a rite of passage as a child. I will say that the times that I've been bored during school breaks. Notice I said school breaks, not at school. I would make paper airplanes. I've seen so many paper airplanes to the point that at the end of it, I started altering the airplanes to give them a cool look. However, I'm also in a, with a little slight challenge right here. I have to think of what materials I have available here at home. So I do know this. I have popsicle sticks, I have paper, and I also have cardboard. So at this point, I think it's a good time to start planning. And as I get ready to plan, I wanna make sure that my ideas are close to the final project or close to the final prototype or schematics of what I want my planes to look like. And I will say this, if testing does go well, then you know what? I could faithfully say that I took on the role of an aerospace engineer, and later on, I'll probably wanna find a way to improve my device. So let's start going to the plan stage and seeing things of how we want our final device to look like. Bam, here we are. What are we building? We're gonna be building a device that can fly in the air. Today though, however, and for the first time ever within our one of our live events, we're not only building one device, we're gonna be building two devices. That's right, two devices. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a popsicle airplane, and then we're gonna be making a paper airplane. All right, are you ready? So here's what we need. We have two different lists. We have our must-haves, and we also have our may haves. So let me share what we can use, okay? Um, popsicle sticks, we need cardboard, we need glue and scissors. Now, if you happen to have none of these, that is totally cool because if you don't have any of those supplies and you have a sheet of paper, great, because that's all you need in order to build the second plane, all right? Now, I do wanna make this little disclaimer here, and that is the following. I want you to be patient and remember that you can pause this video or you can watch it again later on our YouTube channel. OK, don't get frustrated if for some reason I'm going too fast or if anything's happening. Right. I don't want you, I want you to be 
as successful as possible to build this play. All right, let's go ahead and dive into our building now. All right, cool. So as you all can see, I have my popsicle sticks right here, and I have a total of six of them, and you'll see why in a few moments, why I have this many. I also have my a piece of cardboard um, that I'll be cutting later on. Um, I have a pen here, I have my scissors, and I also have this. Because of time, I am using a hot glue gun, um, but I will tell you this, my personal take is that using Elmer's glue is a lot stronger if you wait. And you might be like, Mr. Garcia, Elmer's glue takes so long to dry. Of course it does. You know why? Because all good things take time, all right? Elmer's glue, if you, if you uh, have enough patience, it'll actually be a lot stronger than the plastic um, and the rubbery that uh, the rubbery uh, glue that hot glue has, all right? But I'm only using utilizing that today only because I want to make sure I complete my plane right in front of all of you. But again, if you're using Elmer's glue, please do so. If you happen to use a hot glue gun, number one, make sure that you have an adult present. Um, make sure you have a cup of water present as well. Just in case something were to happen, you can dip your water in there immediately, or your finger in there immediately, and uh, be very, very careful, okay? Um, and as you can see also, I have my sheet of paper, but that's gonna be the second project. All right, first things first. I'm gonna go ahead and grab four popsicle sticks and I'm gonna stack them right on top of each other, okay? So just like this one right here, just so I can make sure that they're gonna line up perfectly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add glue towards the middle. And notice that as I'm adding glue towards the middle, I'm doing that specifically because I want to protect my fingers. I don't want my fingers to get any hot glue on it, but I also need to solidify this airplane, okay? So I want to make sure my airplane is pretty strong. So I'm going to glue two pieces of popsicle sticks. And then I'm going to do the same thing so I can have two pieces here. Awesome. Now I'm going to let that dry up. And I'm gonna use these two um, popsicle sticks that I have and just use them like rulers, okay? Because I am gonna come back to use these later on, but for the most part, I wanna use them as a ruler for right now. And the reason why is because we're gonna wanna separate our, we're gonna wanna separate the body of the plane. So what I wanna do is I wanna create the plane where I can actually stack them up on each other just like this. However, I want it to also stack up where this bottom part right here will actually be the front of the plane and this one will be the bottom and that way there's actually some cushion right in between the two, okay? So just like this, all right? So let me go ahead and cut the pieces of cardboard, the two pieces that I need. There you go. I'm gonna cut this one as well. I'm gonna cut this one. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to cut the, one of the pieces of cardboard in half because I'm gonna to need to save it for later on. I'm gonna create it for the wings. I wanna make sure I have an extra piece ready to go, okay? So here are my two pieces and here's the other one I cut and I'm gonna go ahead and just model this after and cut this in half. And now these extra pieces that I have right here, I'm gonna cut these in half as well, okay? So that way I can stack these two right here. And then I'm gonna cut this one in half and then save this extra piece. Extra cardboard never really hurt anyone. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start stacking these on top of each other, just like this, okay? And one side's gonna be larger than the other, so that way it kind of emulates having the airplane nice and angled. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one as well. All right, and then this should be already glued up. As you can see, I'm gonna have that nice angled airplane. All 
All right, cool. All right, as I get ready for that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pen and I am going to make a right triangle. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that as the wing to the top of my airplane. Just like this. Here you go. All right. And remember that extra piece I had that I didn't use? I'm going to go ahead and actually draw. So I'm going to use these two pieces as the wings. I'm going to cut this part off so that way they match. Go ahead and put glue right here and glue on this side. Then I'm going to go ahead and add the back wings and then reinforce it with some glue on top. Now, I would encourage you um, have even a sheet of paper like this um, just so that way you can have like a base, because if you want to, you could always pick up your base or your sheet of paper, take it outside and uh, it would dry faster, especially if you're using like Elmer's glue or something. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add glue on the top right here and put my first wing. So let me go ahead and back that up so you all can see it. And then I'm going to line it up right here and then lift up my uh, plane. As you can see, I have glue right over here and then line it up perfectly right here. All right, I'm going to slowly just move this across so that way it can finish drying. So there we did it. Our first prototype of the airplane. And I'll show you all how that looks like in a few moments. It's starting to dry up. Looks pretty cool, right? Now here's our second device. And that is the paper airplane. So let me go ahead and you can see that I have a full sheet of paper right here. Okay. And I'm actually going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit just for the sake of of this one so that way you can see more of where the folds are going to be happening okay okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and make sure our our piece of paper is on portrait mode all right so those of you guys that are in social media influencers you know exactly what portrait mode looks like and we're going to fold that in half right here and as we get ready to fold this, I'm also going to draw a line so that way you all can specifically and explicitly see where I'm going to be folding my edges to, okay? Now, I will say this. This next play I'm about to show you, it's all in folding the edges, okay? So finding where the edges go. So for the first one, we're going to get the top right edge of the piece of paper and fold it in half or fold it where this corner actually makes its way over here and it's all the way to the line. You don't want to pass that line. OK, you can see the line somewhat still visible if I lift it up. So it's right on the borderline. They're going to do the same thing with this corner and bring it to this side. And fold it on the top just like that. Now, traditionally, I'm never going to forget when I was in preschool, I would just fold this in half and then fold the wings down and I would have my paper airplane. But as I was in third and in fourth grade, I learned to be a little bit more stealth like because check this out. I'm going to make sure that this corner right here, this part that I just folded, this edge needs to touch also on the black line. So I'm going to go ahead and move it just like this. And look how that plane structure looks like. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the opposite side. And it's going to look kind of like an arrow, okay? Isn't that kind of cool? And now I can fold it in half. And now we're talking, look at how big the wings could possibly be. Now, this next part here is my favorite part. This is the part that really just kind of changed my perspective on how cool paper airplanes could be. You're going to want to have this edge touch this edge that's right down here. This is a really cool geometry lesson if you're really paying attention. It's really cool. So let me go ahead and fold this part down. Bam. 
Again, try this at home, but don't try this at school, especially if you're going back in person next week. All right, just giving you some fair warning, everyone. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with this edge, and I'm going to fold it up and put it right here to make sure it touches this corner. Unless your teacher has it as a science experiment, or unless you're watching this in school because your teacher's watching our replays, then for sure you could try this then. All right, look at this. I'm going to bring the wings out. Now, for me, this looks like a stealthy air jet. Doesn't look like a plane to me. It looks like one of those cool air jets. Now, here's a little trick that I found later on. If you cut like an inch down from the top part of this uh, or the back of this airplane, and just cut it in incision and just stop where the fold begins and then open up the wings a little bit and flip it out. Look at this. It almost looks like that Thunderbird Mac, uh, jet that the X-Men use. Does anyone know what the name of that is? If so, drop it in the chat. But either way, I know the X-Men, they've used this before. This is pretty cool, right? It, I can't believe it took me until middle school to figure out to do this. But either way, hey, we're learning every single day, right? Cool. Well, this next part that we're going to dive into, we want to test it, don't we? We're still part of this create stage. We need to test this. So I actually, I'm going to show you a quick video of me actually testing it outside, getting some fresh air. So if you're paying attention, keep your eyes on the screen. Check this out. All right, test number one of our airplane design. Wind is blowing going that way. Let's see how far it goes. Okay. Well, from the looks of this, it just fell because it was thrown. So for some reason, it's not picking up any forms of wind power. All right, I'm at the same location. Now it's the paper airplane. As you can see, I have it all ready to go. The wind is blowing that way. Let's see how far this goes. This one did have some wind speed. Went a little further, as you can tell. Had a little bit more hang time too. Cool. Nice. So, before we move forward, I want to ask you a quick question. What differences did you notice on how the two airplanes work? All right, so if you can do me a favor, drop those answers also in the chat. So now that we've built our design, what could we improve on? So I would like for you all to even also answer this question in the chat. What would you do to improve the design of the flying device? Okay. Well, I will say this is that previously, as I was looking up how to make um, paper, not paper airplanes, but the popsicle airplanes or, or airplanes made out of even just like wood material, I noticed that some planes used a clothespin. And I thought, you know what? That's actually pretty cool because, and here's the plane that we just made right now. The clothespin has somewhat of a similar structure to the middle part of my airplane. So I thought, you know what? What if the structure is already made? And then I can focus more on the wingspans or how to make the wings a little bit more curved. So that's what I would do differently for the um, popsicle stick airplane. For the paper airplane, though, I would actually look at different models because I pulled up this uh, website earlier from Fold and Fly, and I saw that they had a variety of ways of making paper airplanes. So I thought that'd be kind of cool to build every single one of them and to test them to see how they would fly in the air. All right. Well, as some of you are still uh, giving me your ideas of what differences you notice between the two planes or what improvements you would make, I want you to get ready for this next part, all right? And that is our Kahoot game, all right? So before that, I want to let you know that we completed what we needed to complete. We've accomplished what we needed to accomplish. And we've solved a problem and created a solution for it. And on top of that, congratulations. 
because you just went through the entire engineering design process. So now, are you ready for that Kahoot game? Because I know that I am. So here are the instructions. Remember to play, you will need to open up another window, not a tab, so, so you can see my questions on one window and your answers on the other one. So please type in Kahoot.it. So on that new tab, I'm not sorry, that new browser that you have open or that new window, type in Kahoot.it. And here's the pin. It is 487-9634, okay? So that's the pin again, 487-9634. On top of all of that, our moderators and my co-pilots are gonna type the link and the pin into the chat box, all right? So as we are waiting for our contestants to join us, I'm gonna invite Mr. Bruder to come back on here and to showcase and share with us if there's any questions that there are friends that have been watching have been answering so far. Hey, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, Mara, one of our fourth graders shared that she would, uh, as an improvement, cut that part that you talked about earlier. Uh, Jared shared that he would do some things to make it more aerodynamic. OK. Uh, Noah mentioned that he would do some things to try to make the plane lighter. Nice. Uh, we also heard from Natalia, who said that she would want to make the plane bigger or lighter, kind of like how a Frisbee works. That's really cool. That is really cool. What about um, any noticings as far as like the difference between a popsicle stick airplane and a paper airplane? You know what? We're still getting a whole bunch in. I know one person noted that um, the the hole that they put in the paper airplane sometimes could make it catch on something. Oh, OK. That's true, too. Uh, that is very true. Our friend Hannah from Parkview shared that she would Im improve it uh, to make it more like using a sturdier paper. I'm thinking like poster board or cardstock, stock, maybe. Yeah. Um, that way it could be more durable and still pick up speed so the weight doesn't build up like the popsicle one. Yeah. Kyle shared that uh, try to improve the smoothness of the popsicle airplane and kind of try to compare it to the, the paper airplane that, to help figure out what he needed to do. Okay. Uh, Layla shared that she, you, speak, you spoke about noticing earlier. She noticed that the paper plane went further in distance than the, the popsicle stick plane. Nice, that's true, it did happen. Um, and then Kyle noted that that popsicle stick plane was definitely heavier. So the weight led to the drag and so it, it couldn't catch the wind as well and, and which is why it, it fell a little quicker. Okay. And that the, air, the paper airplane, it's light, has smooth areas, so the wind would catch that light airplane and it would go a little farther. That's a really cool observation. That is really cool. Thank you so much to Kyle and Layla for noticing those things. That is awesome. So how are we right now with our friends uh, logging on to Kahoot, Mr. B? You know, I see a few more popping up, but I think we're ready to go. Okay, well, I will put this little disclaimer out there. At any given point in time, you get kicked off or whatnot, you will actually see the um, Kahoot pin right on the bottom. So don't worry if something were to happen, you can always join the game even in the middle of the game. All right, I'm actually gonna try something a little different. I'm really into a lot of like music, especially if you saw our last uh, live event. So I'm gonna see if I can add a little bit of some music in the background. All right, let's get started. All right, question number one. Who were the first inventors of the airplane? Was it the Russo brothers, the Duffer brothers, the Wright brothers, or the Nola brothers? Let me go ahead and reread the question. Who were the first inventors of the airplane? Was it Red Lion, the Russo brothers? Was it Blue Diamond, the Duffer brothers? Was it Orange Circle, the Wright Brothers? Or was it Green Square, the Nola Brothers? Which brothers were they? Let me give you a few hints. 
couple of these brothers are actually movie producers, and the other brothers are actually Major League Baseball players. So, complete opposite of when it comes to flying. That's the only hint I'll give you. Hopefully you chose the right answer. And we are correct. The right brothers. And I'm going to, those ones that did answer the Russo brothers, I mean, I'll give it to you. I mean, they work with science fiction flight, so that kind of works. Hey, Mr. Garcia. Yes. Before we move on to the next question, we love the music, but your voice was fading out a little bit when the music was going at the same time, so you might have to. All right. I might have to sing along then. Just kidding. All right. Maybe I'll create my own music, flight music. So what does an aerospace engineer do? This should be pretty easy. Is it Red Triangle? Do they design suits for Iron Man? Or Blue Diamond? Design something that can fly. So what does an aerospace engineer do? Do they design suits for Iron Man? Red Triangle? Or is it Blue Diamond? Do they design something that can fly? What do you think happens? Now, I will tell you this, hypothetically speaking, and if you really want to get technical, one of those answers could work, but if we're going to go off the vocabulary that we talked about earlier, which one would be the correct answer? And as you can see, we do have a photo of an aerospace engineer. All right, let's see what the answers are. All right, if that's correct, they design something that can fly, and one person must live in the multiverse, which is totally cool, too. So who do we have? We have Green Goat that is currently winning, and then Sturdy Raccoon is coming, and then Fearless Lion. All right, question number three. How is range defined in aerospace engineering? Is it red triangle, the distance an airplane can travel, with a given amount of fuel, or is it blue diamond, a math vocabulary word, or is it orange circle, where the deer and the buffalo roam, or is it green square, a short version for the power range errs. So how is range defined in aerospace engineering? Again, don't forget the vocabulary we went over. Is it red triangle? The distance an airplane can travel with a given amount of fuel. Or is it blue diamond, a math vocabulary word? Or is it orange circle, where the deer and the buffalo roam? Or is it green square, a short version for the power range errs? Correct. The distance an airplane can travel within a given amount of fuel. Good job, everyone. Green Goat is still winning. There you go. All right. Question number four. What is the definition of maintenance in aerospace engineering? Is it red triangle waxing the flying device? Is it blue diamond polishing satellites? Is it orange circle ensuring all those aboard the aircraft have food to eat? Or is it green um, square, tasks that ensure the safety and security of an aircraft? What is the definition of maintenance in aerospace engineering? Red triangle waxing the flying device, blue diamond polishing satellites, is it orange circle ensuring all those aboard the aircraft have food to eat? Is it green square task that ensure the safety and security of an aircraft? What's your final answer? Correct green task that ensure the safety and security of an aircraft. All right, four players just hit a hot streak. And this last one is for double points, I believe. So be quick to answer. All right. What stage in the engineering design process allows you to make something better? Is it red triangle, the ask stage? 
Is it blue diamond, the imagine stage? Is it orange circle, the create stage? Is it green square, the improve stage? Again, what stage in the engineering design process allows you to make something better? Is it red triangle, the ask stage? Blue diamond, the imagine stage? Orange circle, the create stage? Or green square, the improve stage? Now that's kind of crazy to see how the plane was developed and looked at and like tested in 1903, looking at now 2020. A big difference in how planes look like. Let's see what the final answer is. Correct, everyone. The improved stage allows you to make something better. Now, those of you that answered imagine or create, yes, you could probably improve something in the middle of that. But according to what we were looking at, the improved stage is the one where we really focus on making something better. All right, let's look at the podium and see who our winners are. In third place, we have Super Dragon. And in second place, we have Golden Egret. But in first place, five out of five, Lucky Dragon. Congratulations. And also congratulations to our runners up. All right. So let's go ahead and go back. So if you like this and you want to learn more, be sure to go to our Innovation and Instruction YouTube channel. That's right, we have a channel. Our moderators are going to put those links in the chat. There you will find many more hands-on STEAM events that our team has done from this school year, which you can build and create any time you want. All right, last but surely not least, next week, Friday, April 16th at 1 p.m., you want to be back here at the same spot and you want to bring everyone you know because we are going to go green building a sprout house with none other than the one and only Mrs. Hughes. That's right. She's going to go green building a sprout house. Well, that concludes our time together today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our, another one of our Innovation Live events. And I look forward to seeing you now as a moderator next week. All right, take care. Have a good afternoon.